my uh, name is Darren. I uh, retired in 2004 as a lieutenant colonel and um, spent most of my career as an armor officer um, doing everything tanks, um, culminating at the Pentagon uh, from 2001 to 2004 as the Abrams tank fleet manager, basically. When I got out and retired, it, it's a lot of apprehension because you're leaving a life that is so structured, it's so uh, routine, and you know what kind of policies you have to follow, what kind of uniforms you have to wear, and, and a whole different speak. And so when you get out after 20 years of doing that and you get into the society where, you know, they may not have the work ethic or the work values that you are accustomed to, it can be very frustrating. I had a lot of apprehensions when I got out of what I was going to do, where I would fit in, um, what kind of job I would get. And what I found out is that the skills that you bring out of the military, you know, the leadership skills that the uh, organizational skills, the, the commitment, the work ethic and all of that is highly valuable in, the, in, in civilian life, but you have to also realize that civilian life is not military life. When I found out that my son was going to be deployed to Iraq uh, as an army medic, it gave me that feeling like, okay, at least I know he's going to be the best prepared, best equipped that he can. Now, what happens to him over there, I have no idea. And you just kind of hope for the best and, and expect the worst sometimes. And, um, you know, you worry every day. He was over there for 14 months. And once he came back, it was like, thank God we got him back. He's good to go. He's back in the States. And four months later, he was killed in a in a motorcycle accident. These kids that are coming back that, um, you know, they, they feel like they're invincible. They're young, they've just been through a war, they've just been through hell, and they come out of it unscathed and they have this invincibility about them, that, this mentality that nothing can happen to me, look what I've just been through. And so uh, that, after thinking that he was gonna be A-OK, -okay, uh, after, doing 14 months in Iraq to have him killed four months later on July 3rd was devastating, basically. Being an officer, you're always kind of the one that is uh, standing out front saying, you know, we gotta do this and we gotta do that. You have that mentality that I have to be up front leading, I have to be the best PT, I have to be the best runner, I have to do this, I have to know everybody's position on the tank, you know, and so you have that mentality of, um, taking care of your troops, but not always taking care of yourself. But it's that officer mentality, I think, that, that sometimes is to a fault that we don't take care of ourselves. And we maybe not realize that when we should. I guess my, my one thing that I would recommend anybody and everybody to do that gets out of the Army, whether they get out after four years or two years or 20 years or 30 years, is to check in with the, the veteran service officer in their neighborhood or in their county and just say, hey, I'm here, um, and just kind of keep in touch with them. Go in, have a cup of coffee with, coffee with them, and if they do start feeling anxiety about um, you know, not being able to get a job or having trouble at the home or family life or just um, any kind of situations they might find them in, there's so many avenues that they can take now. It's not, a, it's not a stigma anymore to ask for that help, um, as it may have been in the past. My dad's a great example. He's 81 years old. He was a Korean War vet, and the first time he stepped into a VSO office was last Christmas. Just so, and he had no idea what was available to him, because he just thought he did his time, he did his, his time in the Army, he got out, he had a successful career, and that was the end of it. And so, you know, 60 some years later, uh, he finally steps into a VSO office and finds out, hey, there's a lot of other things I could have taken advantage of. And so why wait, uh, you know, 50 or 60 years to find that out? Find it out as soon as you get out. And there's so many programs out there to help 